In today's video, we're going to walk through a step-by-step -step example of building and customizing a database-first CRUD application that utilizes the ServiceStack Low-Code app. ServiceStack's low-code app generates a friendly user interface derived from your service metadata. This UI enables users to manage data which can be ideal for rapidly developing line-of-business applications. Your service metadata can also be generated at runtime, driven directly off your database tables. Additional metadata can be added to these generated models, further customizing your services and your low-code application. Low-code is built in by default and also integrates with a variety of other service stack high-level features like audit, authentication, validation, and others. We're going to use the Northwind sample database to show how quickly we can go from just having a database to managing data in that database in a customized, user-friendly low-code application. We will use the Northwind database as a SQLite database, but this technique using low-code also supports Postgres, MS SQL, and MySQL databases. Before we go any further, we will need to make sure we have a few things installed the .NET 6 SDK, and the ServiceStack.NET X tool. If you don't yet have the ServiceStack.NET X tool installed, you can install it using the command .NET tool install gx. To get us started, we'll want a simple web application that's already set up with ServiceStack. We can do this by generating a project from the ServiceStack website. Going to servicestack.net and clicking on Get Started at the top right will bring you to a template generator that allows you to set up the project you want to start with. For this walkthrough, we will start with an empty web template so we can show the steps to configure a database-driven low-code application. Provide a name for your project and click the web template to download a zip of your newly created solution. Alternatively, this page enables you to select the template you want with the optional features already mixed in. This can save some time if you know what technologies you will already be using for your project. For example, in this project we could have selected Auto Query and SQLite, but we will use another tool to mix these features in after we've already started. If you already have the ServiceStack.NET X tool installed and prefer using command line tools, at the bottom of the page you will also find a script to replicate these options. Once downloaded, you'll want to unzip the solution into a directory on your local machine where you want to work from. Opening in your favorite .NET IDE, we will see a solution with four projects. This is a standard setup for service stack templates, which consist of your app host project, your service interface project, your service model project, and a tests project. The app host project is where you configure your application, and since we will be using auto query to generate our service implementations from our database, this is where we want to make our changes. The servicestack.net x tool can mix in common features to your application using mix templates. For example, we want to add SQLite support and auto query to our application, and we can do this with the command x mix SQLite auto query. These commands can be run from your project directory or your app host directory. We can also mix in the Northwind SQLite sample database as well for ease of use, running the command xmix northwind.sqlite directly in our app host project folder. To see a full list of templates, type xmix by itself. Once we have mixed SQLite and auto query, we will get two configure classes, configure.db.cs and configure.autoquery.cs. Configure.db.cs contains our configuration for the SQLite connection and ORM Lite provider options. Here we can see we are using memory as a connection string to use SQLite as an in-memory database. We will want to change this to connect to our database, which is a northwind.sqlite file in this example. So now we have a database connection factory registered with our app host, and we can configure our auto query to use our database schema to generate our services. In configure.autoquery.cs, the auto query feature plugin is configured to scan for code first services by default. This would require declaring our database table model classes and request data transfer objects in code before auto query service implementations would be generated. Instead, we're going to use the autogen feature of auto query to do this for us at runtime. To configure auto query to do this, we will instantiate the generated CRUD services property with the auto register flag set to true. 
the auto query feature plugin will automatically use your registered IDB connection factory to communicate with your database and generate services for the tables in the public schema. Building and running our application now and navigating to the service stack metadata page at forward slash metadata, we can see the create, query, update and delete services for each of the Northwind tables. Clicking on one of these services will show the service in the API Explorer UI, which is built into your service stack application. This presents the metadata about your APIs for developers to make them easier to consume. At the top right of this screen, there is also a view in low code button. Clicking on this will take you to your low code app, which provides a user friendly way to manage data using your auto query services. On the left, each of the four services is grouped by table, enabling you to filter, sort, and navigate between related tables from the built-in menus. For example, if a back office staff member wanted to see the most recent sales grouped by customer and are only interested in a few specific columns, we can do that by applying the sort order to date and then customer ID and then filtering only the columns we are interested in. Here we can also change the number of rows per page and the paging controls themselves are at the top of the data table. Additionally, if we're only interested in one year of sales, we can apply a filter of dates from a specific year. Multiple filters and sorts can be combined and existing filters can be managed or removed using the top table menu or cleared using the reset preferences and filters button. If a data model has a corresponding auto query service for create, a plus button will be available to create rows using a generated form. The creation of rows using the default generated form also infers controls based on the data type in your database schema. The same applies for updating data as well. If the table schema for the row you are creating or updating has a foreign key to other tables, you can also look up IDs using modal dialogues, which can also be queried, filtered, and sorted. When viewing data, foreign key data can be expanded just by clicking on the related link, enabling easy navigation between related information. Snapshots of your current view can be exported to Excel in CSV format using the Excel button at the top. And if you want the API URL that's generating the same view of data, the copy URL button will give you the API URL of the same filtering and sorting preferences. To get all this functionality, all we have done so far is configure our database connection and add auto query with the generate CRUD services option. If your database doesn't use the public schema, you can also configure the generate CRUD services to use multiple schemas and databases. The create services property of the generate CRUD services option can be instantiated specifying a different schema name, the default being public. It can also be configured with the name of an ORM Lite named connection. Multiple of these can be added to compose different schemas and connections in the same low-code application. Once you've configured the Generate CRUD services option, let's look at different ways we can customize the low-code app and how data is presented in the UI. First, let's change the brand image at the top by configuring the UI feature plugin that is registered by default. By using the configure plugin method from your app host, we can access existing plugins and change the info.brand icon, pointing the image info URI to a local www root directory path and some custom CSS class information using Tailwind utility classes. Customizations for services and data models are done using additional metadata associated with service and data model classes using C -sharp attributes. However, since the models and data transfer objects are generated at runtime, we need to also add the attributes to the related metadata also at runtime. We can do this with two overridable actions on the Generate CRUD Services option, the Service Filter and the Type Filter. The Service Filter iterates through the Service Operation metadata types, and the Type Filter iterates over the Request, Response, and Data Model metadata types. These filters enable us to apply attributes at runtime to classes and properties to extend the metadata that drives the low-code app. First, let's group our services under a different heading on the left menu by using the tag attribute and the service filter. Since the tag attribute is applied to the request DTO, we can apply it using the operations request property and the method addAttribute if not exists. 
Rerunning our application, and we can see our left hand menu drop down has changed to our Northwind tag. Next, we will change the default table icon of each service to a custom one that represents our data better visually. We can do this using a static dictionary of table name and matching SVG, as well as the type filter. We can apply each icon by checking if the type name in the dictionary matches the type name of the filter. If they do match, we can apply the icon attribute specifying the value from the dictionary. Running our application after this update, we can see the icons on the left have updated, as well as the references in the foreign key columns, making it easier to distinguish related data and tables. The visible data used to preview lookup data in the foreign key columns are also customizable. For example, in the employee territory table, the lookup for the territory ID currently displays the numerical code ID. We can improve this by using the ref attribute and specifying three things. The model, which is the related metadata type name, the ref ID, which is the related primary key property name of the territory table, and the ref label, which is the property we want to use as the label instead. Once applied and rerunning our application, we can now see the territory description in place of the numerical code ID. We can also change how data is formatted in specific columns. For example, in the order detail table, we have columns, unit price, and discount that are currently presenting as decimals. To make looking at the data more intuitive, let's apply some internationalization formatting from the browser. The intl.numberformat JavaScript API can be used via the intl number attribute in C Sharp. We can use this to change the format to a specified currency for the unit price and the number style of percentage for discount. Viewing our order detail query after this change makes the data easier to read and manage. The C Sharp attributes of intl, intl datetime, and intl relative time APIs are also available and mapped to the same intl JavaScript browser APIs. Another way to change how data is presented in each column is to use the format attribute. On the customer, supplier, and shipper table, for example, we have phone and fax number strings. We can present these as clickable tell links using the format attribute and specifying the format methods.link phone constant. These format method constants are strings that match a JavaScript method name on the client and can be passed a single option string containing a JavaScript object. The JavaScript functions in format methods are already registered with your low-code application, and you can define your own format methods for your low-code app using a predefined custom.js file in the www root low-code modules directory. By creating a custom.js file in this specific path, your low-code application will load this file so your own format methods are ready to use. For example, if we wanted to use an icon for flagging a product as discontinued or not with a tick or a cross, we would declare a discontinued style function that generates a span with the associated emoji. Applying the format attribute with the name of our method and rerunning our application, we get friendly ticks and crosses and a title to clarify what each state means. So we now know we can change how our data is viewed by using the ref, intl, and format attributes registered to our data model metadata types. And we can also customize the create and edit forms as well. To change how staff might input the data, we can use the input attribute applied to the create and update request DTOs. This changes the related create and edit forms for a specific property. We can use the isCrud create or update method specifying the related employee model name to filter the types we want to apply this input attribute to. An improvement for usability would be changing the notes property of these related operations to be a text area to better support long form writing of notes. We can use constants from the input.types class applied to the type property of the input attribute to avoid invalid strings. The input attribute contains a wide array of properties enabling a flexible way of tweaking the input HTML used in the edit and create forms. Sometimes you might need to change position or remove specific columns from use in your low-code app. If you want to remove or reorder columns in a specific view, you can use properties.removeAll 
or type.reorder property specifying an after or before of another known property. Here, we're going to remove the photo column since the Northwind sample database uses blobs for photos and reorder the photo path before the title. Rerunning our application and looking at the employee table, we can see that the photo column has been removed and the photo path column is reordered and now in view by default. However, these are just old URLs and aren't that useful to quickly view. For employees, ideally we'd be able to preview pictures associated with each employee. We can do this with one of the high level features that Lowcode integrates with called File Uploads Feature Plugin. These managed file uploads can store path information in a custom column, meaning we can migrate existing data to a better storage solution that can integrate with cloud storage providers like Azure Blob Storage or AWS S3. The Files Upload feature plugin utilizes virtual file providers, which ServiceStack has support for both these cloud systems. But for this example, we're going to use a local file storage. With the use of File Systems Virtual Files Provider and a migrated list of files that match the path pattern of employee ID.jpg, we now have our photo binary data out of the database while still using the same schema. The upload location config of the file uploads feature is given a name so we can match our custom photo path to use this specific configuration. We limit the uploads to web image extensions only and allow anonymous uploads for testing purposes. With our file uploads feature configured in our app host, we can apply the format attribute to our database model for photo path so our images are previewed in our low code app. The built in icon rounded format method creates a nice circle which is ideal for employee headshots. Lastly, we migrate the photo path column values in the database to match the configured upload location path so that the images will load using the managed file upload feature. Rerunning our application and our staff now have preview staff photos when working in this table. For managing these file uploads, we need to also apply two attributes to the create and update employee request DTOs. Input attribute to use a file upload control and the uploads to attribute to relate the column path to our configured employees upload location of our file uploads feature plugin. Once these are applied, we have a fully functional upload and download service applied to our existing database and existing column has been repurposed to avoid large binaries in our database. We can edit or create new employees, uploading data and our new files appear in the configured local directory. ServiceStack Lowcode provides a flexible development model that enables developers to start quickly and adapt their development efforts based on early user feedback. We started this example with an existing database and a blank web template and were able to create an application without writing our own service implementation thanks to auto query and low code. There are other features available to extend and integrate which are outlined in the service stack documentation and other sample applications. This provides a way to quickly iterate and customize a CRUD application which can suit a wide range of line of business applications. We can even start with a database first development model like with Northwind and migrate to using a code first model with a single command of the servicestack.net x tool. This even takes your runtime customizations with you so you don't waste any effort redoing them with a code first model. And even if you find you need your own custom UI, Lowcode is interacting with auto query services which are all discoverable in the API Explorer with client generation available in nine languages. ServiceStack's low-code app and related features are growing so we can provide developers a way to produce API-driven systems quickly that become the foundation of your applications. Check out lowcode.dev for more information and let us know what kind of features you would like to see added. Well that's it for this video, if you have any suggestions or feedback about our templates or videos let us know in the comments. If you want to learn more, check out our other videos and join us in the ServiceStack community through our Discord and GitHub discussions. ServiceStack is free for individuals and open source projects so anyone is welcome. And as always, thanks for watching.